Hi, my name is Audrey, and I'm going to be reading an excerpt from Eric Fromm's Man for Himself um, that I found rather interesting and I wanted to share with you. Spinoza, like Aristotle, inquires into this distinctive function of man. He begins by considering the distinctive function and aim of anything in nature and answers that each thing, as far as it is in itself, endeavors to preserve in its being. Man, his function and aim cannot, can be nothing else than that of any other thing, to preserve himself and to preserve in his existence. Spinoza arrives at the concept of virtue, which is only the application of the general norm to the existence of man. To act absolutely in conformity with virtue is, in us, nothing but acting, living and preserving our being, as reason directs, from the ground of seeking our own profits. Preserving one's being means to Spinoza to become that with one that which one potentially is. This holds true for all things. A horse, Spinoza said, would be as much destroyed if it were changed into a man as if it were changed into an insect. And we might add, according to Spinoza, that a man would be as much destroyed if he became an angel as if he became a horse. Virtue is the unfolding of the specific potentialities of every organism. For man, it is the state in which he is most human. By good, consequently, Spinoza understands everything which we are certain is a means by which we may approach nearer and nearer to the model of human nature he set before us. By evil, he understands, everything which we are certain hinders us from reaching that model. Virtue is thus identical, identical with the realization of man's nature the science of man is consequently the theoretical science on which ethics is based. This passage made me, resonated with me particularly because of our immersion group that just went to India. Um, when they came back, they were talking about some of the Buddhist ideas and theories that they studied while they were there. And this passage made me think about this, especially when it talked about virtue because, um, and I'm probably going to butcher something wonderful and beautiful and eloquent, but um, as I understood it, there's a, a way of life and a mentality um, in Buddhism that uh, if you live your life with intentions and, like, genuine intentions, then nothing you do can be bad or wrong. Um, so, if you are genuine in the way you approach situations, then um, if you indulge, like if you indulge in taboo uh, situations, then as long as your motivation is genuine, and like if you want to emotionally um, connect with a person in a genuine way, um, then you're experiencing the true nature of something and you can't and it's not considered bad um, and I feel that this mentality for a way of life seems much more harmonious and practical than the golden rule um, because in our in our world there's there's ugly things and there's like uncomfortable things and things people don't want to talk about but are a reality and um, if a person lives by a code that separates the good and the bad and chooses only to recognize the good as the virtuous or righteous, then life expectations are set up that are almost impossible to attain. Um, so, and, and this really made me think about how often in our lives do we lie to ourselves? Do we lie to our friends and our family to cover up a truth that doesn't conform with an external code. And what if we took a break from the webs of, of lies and politically correct statements to live for a day, a week, or a month with genuine purposeful intentions that were in sight, were in line with 
the truth of who we are as individuals. Um, the the part the parts that where we are most human and the the truth of that. What if we could live with that? Um, I wonder if we could eliminate the chips on our shoulders our great ancestors told us to carry and I wonder if we could come close to a more harmonious existence that derives its merit from a genuine raw existence instead of a politically correct line of motivation.